Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at Chapter 11 Bankruptcy. In the prior session, we looked at Chapter 7. This topic is covered in Advanced Accounting. It's also covered on the CPA exam direct section and indirectly on the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you don't have a LinkedIn account. Please subscribe to my YouTube. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. All my lectures are free on YouTube. Please like them, share them, put them in playlist. Let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from my lecture, it means someone else might benefit as well. This is my Instagram account, this is my Facebook account, and this is my website. On my website, I often have CPA offer. For example, right now, Becker is offering $1,000 off for, their, for unlimited access for their CPA program. This is a limited time offer. If I was in your shoes, I will buy this course if I'm studying for my exam or if I'm still a college student where I can supplement my studies during college. Let's go ahead and get started and talk about Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now, what is Chapter 11? What's the difference between Chapter 11 and Chapter 7? In Chapter 7, what we learn about is the company liquidate. The company go out of business. They go out of business. They're gone. Okay. In chapter 11, what happened is this. The creditors believe it's in their best interest to keep the business alive. So they don't want to put the business out of business because they believe there's a chance that that business might survive, might survive um, in the long run. So what they do is they try to work a plan. They can work the plan informally, like what we talked about in the first recording, basically some sort of a contractual agreement or they can go through chapter 11 bankruptcy. So chapter 11 is a reorganization. It's not a liquidation, it's a reorganization. This is liquidation, this is chapter seven. So if a creditor of an insolvent debtor believe it can rehab the business, then they can agree to a plan for reorganization. The plan can be informal, and we talked about contractual agreement earlier in the chapter, look in this playlist, or it can be formal, which is goes through chapter 11. Now. Now, bear in mind, if, although it goes through Chapter 11, the company have an exclusive right to develop its organizational plan within 120 days after, after which any interested parties may propose a bankruptcy plan. So first, they give the company a chance to reorganize itself. Now, the court can extend this reorganization period up to 18 months. So they, they basically, they'll give them the chance to put their act together and hopefully they can reorganize the business. Also, the court is supposed to appoint a committee um, uh, the court appoint a committee of creditors holding unsecured claims. Usually the, the committee is composed of the largest seven creditors, obviously, because they have the most, most of the money involved. Also, they could um, appoint a committee, additional committee of creditors or of stockholders. Of course, stockholders can be involved as well in order, in order to assure both creditors and stockholders are represented. Now, if a committee of stockholders is appointed, again, it will it will be composed of the seven largest equity security holders. So the seven largest equity holders. So what are the power and duties of the committee? Well, the committee select and authorize the appointment of one or more attorneys, accountant, or other agents, consultant, banker, um, actuarial science, whatever is needed to prefer services for the committee they can consult with the trustee or the or the debtor or the debtor concerning the administration of the case they can investigate the act conduct assets liabilities and financial condition of the debtor the operation of the debtor's business and desirability of the continuance of such business and any other matter relevant to the case or to the formulation of the plan so simply put they can look into your assets your liabilities your financial conditions your revenue your expenses anything that's relevant to the business they can investigate they can participate in the formulation of a plan, advise those represented by the committee or of the committee's recommendation as to any plan formulated and collect and file the court acceptance of a plan. They can also request the appointment of a trustee if the trustee has not previously appointed in the case. Because if, there's, if first there's a committee, sometime the court might assign a trustee. They could request the appointment of the trustee and perform other services in the interest of the people who are represented. Who are the interests? of the people represented, creditors and to, to a second degree shareholders, but creditors are the most interested. Also, the court may permit the debtor to maintain possession of the assets and to conduct the affair of the business, or it may appoint a trustee. 
So the court would say, well, guess what? You're gonna, I'm going to let you run your own business or what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring a trustee. So if, if, if a trustee is appointed, what is the duties of the trustee? Well, be accountable for all property received, obviously, because that's their job to look after the interests of the creditors. Examine claims and object to the allowance of any claims that's improper. Look at the claims of the creditors. Whatever is proper, we accept. Whatever is not proper, we reject. Furnish information about the estate and the estate's administration to interested parties. If somebody's interested what's going on, with the what's the status of the case, furnish this information. If the business of the debtor is authorized to be if the business of the debtor is authorized to be operated, now file file with court, okay, periodic reports or with any governmental agency uh, charged with the responsibility of collecting any tax arising of such operation. You have to file that paperwork. If the debt, if the debt or has not done so, if the debtor, not the debt, if the debtor file with the court a list of creditors, a schedule of assets, liabilities, and the statement of debtor's financial affair. Usually that's if, it, if that's if it's not, but usually that is filed. File a plan of reorganization. And after the confirmation of a plan, file such report that are required by the court. So basically make sure the paperwork is being done. That's what the trustee is making, administer, administering the whole operation. Okay, now, what would the what would the organization plan involve? What what what, the, what would it look like? Okay, it may propose the alteration of legal, contractual, and equity interests of any class of creditors or equity security holders. Basically, one of one of the reasons, or one one reason could be the 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 company might have a strong union. Okay, and that union were demanding high salaries, and that's why the company could not survive. Many companies go under because the union is so strong that the company cannot keep making payments. So what they do, they go through a reorganization, and as a result, the contract between the union and the company will be renegotiated. So that's what we mean by alter legal or contractual obligation. And sometimes what you do, you uh, maybe you wipe out the common, uh, the common shareholders, or you wipe out half of them, or you replace them with preferred, you do some type of reorganization. That's what, that's what the whole thing is about. What you would do with unsecured creditors, they would generally accept a payment, that's less than the face value. So, and they would cancel the remainder. So let's assume uh, your unsecured creditor is is a million dollar. You would say I have six hundred thousand. I'm gonna pay you and wipe out the rest. Basically zero the rest. Now bear in mind the plan must be equitable to all parties by providing for the same treatment for each claim or interest of a particular class. So what you do is you take each class separately and you prorate the the benefit to the whole class. So you don't treat different people differently within each class. And the plan must also contain adequate means for its own execution, that is, it must contain specific provisions. So the plan should have other conditions. If this happened, what would happen? For example, the retention of any property by the debtor. When would the debtor retain any property? The transfer of the property to other entities. If you have a sister company, when do you transfer the property? If there's any merger or consolidation of the debtor with another company, what, what, would, what would we do under those circumstances? Um, for example, the sale of property or the distribution of property to parties of interest. You know, if we're distributing any part, any, any any assets, how is that going to be done? Or the issuance of securities uh, of the debtor for cash, property or existing securities of the debtor. If we're going to be issuing securities, stocks for cash, if we're issuing stocks for property or stocks for other stocks, how would that happen? So basically, we have to have a clear plan. That's what we're, that's what we are saying here. So after the plan is filed, it must be accepted by two third in terms of amount okay and one half which is 50 percent and the number of allowed claims for each class of creditors so each class of creditors you might have a senior versus uh, secured versus unsecured two-thirds of the money so if we're, if we're looking at a hundred thousand we have to make sure that two-thirds of this 66 66.66 plus and half of the creditors agree to that plan okay and two-thirds and the amount of the allowed interest of each of the class of stockholders. Again, two-thirds of the shareholders must approve the plan. In addition, the court must approve the overall fairness of the plan before it will be accepted. Also, the court would review it after the plan has been filed to make sure it is fair. So this is basically chapter 11 reorganization. The next thing we look at is once you get out of chapter 11, you'll get this fresh start. We'll talk a little bit more about the fresh start. If you have any questions about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you are studying for your CPA exam, 
As always, study hard, it's worth it. And see you on the other side of success.